Okay, so now that I've had some time with the DJI Pocket 3, am I still in love with it? Here's some pros and cons that I've noticed in the last month or so. Okay, so let me start off by saying that I bought the Pocket 3 with my own money. It's a production unit. It wasn't sent to me by DJI as a sneak preview or anything like that. It's something that I invested in. So it's not like a pre-production model with a lot of issues, right? And I also want to start off by saying that I absolutely love it. I do not at all regret my decision and I would absolutely buy it again if it was lost or stolen. Basically, the hype is real in regards to image quality and just overall tiny little package that you can just use with great connection, great connectivity, a great mic, a great vlogging camera and so forth. With that being said, there are some issues. There are some things that I don't want to say that they're cons, but areas to improve in. Let's use that. Okay, so the first con or area to improve in has to be the build quality for me. Let me explain. So this thing's not weather sealed and it's very plasticky. And likewise, the gimbal does feel a bit sensitive, maybe a bit weak. So I noticed right off the bat when I first got it, although it's, it's very nice and it does a great job and you know all that good stuff and and it's built pretty well for the price i guess i was expecting more and i get it they have to kind of toe that fine line of you know cost versus cost benefit and of course keeping it light and pocket sized but i really feel like they could have beefed up things a bit another example is i've only had it for about a month and I'm kind of babying it, right? I'm not necessarily abusing it, but I've already noticed that the gimbal is making this weird rattling sound when it closes and it doesn't always close and get in that little pocket format. So the gimbal is already making noise when it's turned off. The creator package was with tax and shipping and everything like 700 bucks. It's only been a month. I don't know, I feel like DJI should have invested a little bit more. Likewise, there are a lot of reports of the screen getting loose or popping off when you try to like rotate it. And in some cases, people just pop it back in and it's fine, it's all good. In other cases, it's like dangling and still working, I don't know. It seems like a Frankenstein issue with the screens happening on some units. Luckily with mine, it hasn't. The screen's still intact, but I can I can see that you know the screen it's a nice screen and everything but again for 700 bucks the build quality could have been better we could have gotten some weather resistance some weather proofing you know that would have been a pretty big deal so number one con or areas to improve in build quality could have been a little bit better and likewise another thing another area of improvement my second area of improvement is I wish DJI would have had replaceable batteries instead of having internal rechargeable batteries. And it would have just made more sense in my opinion. And I think that's sort of a universal thing that everybody, for lack of a better word, is a bit disappointed by. I'm a big fan of internal rechargeable batteries, hands down, in certain devices. But for cameras, it just makes sense to have batteries that you can easily, you know, just quickly change on the fly instead of having an extended grip battery and all these other things that again going back to the build quality the extended grip for example or even the tripod grip the little thing that you use to attach the tripod to it literally connects through a USB-C port and then these two little things that just kind of clip on I think that's going to be a problem in the future so I wish they would have had replaceable batteries and just charge them all up and take them with you instead of buying extended grips and all that stuff. Now, to be fair, the Pocket 2, most people are still using their Pocket 2 after all these years with no problems. But when it comes to an actual camera, 
and the way that they handled it, right? The way that DJI handled it, they knew that they had to extend the battery life and they decided to do this weird extended handle grip thing that clips on kind of funky. Kind of a bad design choice. So why don't they just make the batteries removable? I don't know. And finally, the last con that I have or area of improvement is the active track. Such a cool feature, right? And I love it. It's great. But it's a little too responsive sometimes. Even on the slowest setting, it kind of gives this weird camera jitter effect. I've used it a couple times on my talking heads. It's a little unreliable right now. Sometimes it's great. It keeps me tracked or it keeps me in the frame. Sometimes I use the framing feature. And other times it's kind of moving everywhere with me if I'm just bobbing my head, right? <laughs> so it's a little too sensitive. That's an easy firmware update. But likewise, because it's a firmware thing, I also wanted to add that the app is not so great. It's a little glitchy right now. Like sometimes I can't download footage to my phone and things like that. So when I connect the Pocket 3 to my phone, the app is a bit glitchy. Again, another firmware update that can improve. Active Track is great, but could have used some like AI features to be a little bit better. Now, there's a couple other things that I wanted to note. These are nitpicky items, so I'm just going to mention them and I'm going to tell you why I think they're nitpicky, but might be worth mentioning because you might be hating it right now. The screen is fantastic. Actually, let me take off Active Track so it doesn't get all jittery. The screen is fantastic. No doubt it's a welcome addition, especially compared to the Pocket 2. However, it's still very, very tiny compared to other cameras out there. It doesn't flip out, it doesn't rotate. So, you know, when you're trying to get some shots, you kind of need to bend around and move around with it to actually see what you're doing. So it would have been better to have like a flip out screen that, I don't know, is a little bit more flexible and a larger screen would have been nice. Now, the reason why I say this is kind of nitpicky on my end is because one of the features that works really well on the app with your phone, you can connect the camera to your phone and now your phone becomes a remote monitor and it's a larger screen you can see almost everything really really well so that's a good feature i'm glad that they included that that's why it's kind of nitpicky yes i wish the screen was a little bit bigger yes i wish the screen can flip out and do all that great stuff like mirrorless cameras but i'm okay with it because you can connect to the app and when you do your phone is an external monitor and it works great let's talk about some fantastic things so if you're on the fence you're looking to buy this camera I think you should buy this camera. The image quality is fantastic. One of the best image qualities out of a small travel companion vlogging camera that I've seen in a very long, long time. And more importantly, the low light capabilities are fantastic. This is a huge upgrade from the Pocket 2. So if you have the Pocket 2 or the Pocket 1, especially the Pocket 1, if you're coming from the Pocket 1, Pocket 2, or no Pocket, huge, huge upgrade all around, right? I can't see a scenario where it's not a big upgrade. And likewise, it's going toe to toe with some dedicated mirrorless cameras that are intended for vlogging or interchangeable lens cameras and so forth. Really hits well above its weight class. I love the mechanical gimbal. You get really smooth shots that look very nice, very professional. And I love the entire package connecting the mic to and talking to the camera and seeing yourself and all that you just want to use it and that's really the biggest driving characteristic out of cameras right if you want to actually use them then they're great mission accomplished you're already miles ahead of the competition because you want to pick up the camera and go with it it's easier to pick up this camera and just start shooting than it is my a7s3 or of course something like a cinema camera my ronin 4d dji ronin 4d but that's kind of the overall message that i want to give you guys it's such a great package and it just works so well that you want to use it all the time which translates to you're going to shoot more you're going to go out there and shoot more and make great content and that's the whole point of having a great camera that's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative. And if you did, please consider subscribing. Catch you guys in the next one.